Has anybody ever told you, man, it's cold outside. Global warming is fake. Um, believe it or not, that is a very common argument that is used to disprove global warming. Um, there was even an instance one time where a senator walked outside, grabbed a snowball, came back into the Senate chambers, held it up and said, global warming is a lie. What is wrong with that statement? Is that scientifically true? Well, I'm gonna tell you right now, the answer is no. But why is it not? Well, there's a big, big difference between something that is science and something that is pseudoscience. So let's talk about them. So science. A scientific conclusion is valid if it meets these four main requirements. First off, it is based on substantial amounts of data. I can't just go out, collect a snowball, make a conclusion. Not enough data. You need substantial amounts of data. Um, in, in a statistics class, if you've ever taken a statistics class, typically the golden rule is at least 30. However, the more data you have, the better your conclusion becomes. If you come down with a really bad illness and 30 doctors tell you that it's the same thing, you probably can be confident of what it is. If just one tells you that it's something that's really, really deadly and really, really scary, you might wanna get a second opinion. The second doctor tells you the same thing, your confidence goes up, third doctor goes up even more, fourth doctor goes up even more, and so on. So the more data you have, the more solid your conclusion is. Now that being said, the conclusion also needs to apply in multiple situations or is universal. What that means is that the evidence that you collect to make the conclusion should add up, should equal if the evidence was collected by someone else somewhere else. So it needs to be something that can be applied in multiple situations. You can't just have one specific situation and make a conclusion based on that. Um, it can be tested and reproduced by other scientists with either identical or very similar results. Um, other scientists may have slightly different data sets that might very slightly tweak um, the final result, but the analysis and everything that goes through it pretty much comes out the same on both ends. Um, in both ends, other scientists have to be able to support your conclusion. That's ultimately the result that you're looking for. Um, and it has to be something that has a lot of widespread scientific approval, meaning that it's something that has to be accepted in the scientific community as this is solid science. Almost everything we discuss in this class is valid scientific conclusions, tested by thousands of scientists and well accepted by meteorologists as true. So virtually everything we discuss in this class has a lot of backing to it. Now, how does that differ from pseudoscience? Pseudoscience, which is very anecdotal, and it's something that we oftentimes do very often, is based on very little data, oftentimes just one data point. Going outside, grabbing a snowball, saying it's cold, global warming's fake. Based on one specific situation, Okay, that's true in that one situation. It's cold, it's snowy, maybe it's below average, temperatures are below average. Um, okay, that's one instance. But is that enough for statistical significance? No, you can't apply it in other situations. Maybe the next day you're in a heat wave or in a different part of the world, you're in a heat wave. Conclusions are based on 
questionable, if not outright wrong methods. Here's what that means. What that means is that whatever you did to get to that conclusion doesn't really stand up in the scientific community. It's not good enough in the scientific community. You are not using things that have been verified as, hey, this is how to do science. You're making a conclusion based off of qualitative data, based off of opinions. It's cold outside to you, but it might not be cold outside compared to the average. It's snowing outside. That doesn't mean anything. Um, so conclusions are based on questionable methods. Conclusions are based on questionable methods. So here's some science for this class. The Earth is warming up. This graph right here shows the average global temperatures for the planet. Um, this was collected from the Goddard Institute of Space Studies. And this data or this conclusion was based off of the data that was taken from tens of thousands of locations all around the world in all different climates at all different times of the year, all averaged together and statistically analyzed using acceptable methods to come up with a conclusion. Furthermore, three other agencies, the UK Hadley Center, the National Oceanographic and Atmospheric Administration, and the Japanese Meteorological Agency, basically the four most developed weather agencies in the entire world, ran analysis. They had slightly different data sets because they have access to slightly different data sets, but they ran analysis and pretty much came up with this exact same result with very, very little variation from one another. Not enough to where they're even significantly different from one another. So they all agree that our Earth is warming up. Now, how do we know this? How do we know that the data is sufficient? Let me just show you what I'm talking about. This conclusion is based on thousands of weather stations. So this shows you every red dot represents a World Meteorological Organization certified weather station. Um, they all take weather conditions at, in the exact same way, um, using the same scientifically approved methods. We'll actually talk about that in the next lecture. Um, and so, and, and they cover the world. Now that being said, these are highly populated areas. Um, if you notice the United States, Europe, um, Asia in particular, South Korea in particular, Japan in particular, China's starting to grow in that. Um, but based on thousands of weather stations, now that being said, the oceans look pretty lonely. Well, guess what? We actually have things to fill in the oceans gaps. We have thousands of buoys all around the world collecting temperature data. Um, this is just from the UCSD Argo program, but each one of these buoys is measuring temperatures around the world. And then guess what? In addition to that, we also have the ability to fill in the blanks using things like satellite remote sensing. So satellites can go over areas where there isn't a weather station and actually measure temperatures at those locations to create a somewhat more complete picture of what's going on. We've been doing this ever since the 1960s and our technology is only getting better and better and better. So we are seeing a much, much more complete picture of how much our earth is really warming up. And it is very concerning. And all of this data is analyzed by different agencies. So here are those four agencies I talked about the UK Hadley Center, the Goddard Institute, um, the NOAA Center, and the Japanese Meteorological Agency. There are some differences, but think about this. The differences are tiny 
Meanwhile, the overall trend is alarming. So this is what disagreement looks like. It's not so much, is the earth warming up? It's really only a question of how much it's warming up. But when you add these three or these four different things together, there's a lot of support for our earth warming up. Now, I apologize for getting political, but let me give you an example of pseudoscience. A very, very famous high profile politician has gone to a platform that is now, at least as of this video, no longer allowed to use um and has spouted off some pretty big lies for example this one was in 2014 snowing in texas and louisiana record-setting freezing temperatures throughout the country and beyond global warming is an expensive hoax this is before he became president but 428 people retweeted what he said and 358 liked it here's the crazy thing this was true. On that particular day, it was very cold in the eastern half of the United States. Here's what he left out though. On January 29th, 2014, the western half of the United States, including the Bay Area, the greater Southern California area, were experiencing record heat. There were palm trees on fire in Los Angeles because of how hot it was. We were seeing temperatures in the 90s in January, in January. So this comment is simply based off of one day in one region. He says throughout the country and beyond, but where's the data? There is no data. Um, then down here, in the East, it could be the coldest New Year's Eve on record. Perhaps we could use a little bit of that good old global warming that our country, but not others, was going to pay trillions of dollars to protect against, bundle up. Once again, this is only in the East. Here on the West Coast, it was actually a pretty warm New Year's Eve. It was actually a pretty warm time for us. It was actually way warmer than what he suggested. So this leaves out a lot of important things. One time, one situation, no actual data, no scientific analysis. It ignores other locations. It ignores other situations. It doesn't look at what's been happening before or after these particular incidents. Uh, data that's been collected and analyzed. This is fake news. You cannot take one instance. You cannot even take a handful of instances and make a conclusion. What you need to see is an overall trend. And guess what? The overall trend is, despite some cool times, the average temperatures are going up. Once again, not everywhere and not the same way, but they are going up. So this is significantly concerning. And yet, it's something that really has been propagated by certain people to make us think that scientists don't know what they're talking about. But I hate to break it to you, this is fake news. The good news is this is also the most political I ever get in this class. All right, so now let's actually begin talking about the history of climate science. So how have we gotten to where we are today? Now that we know what the scientific method is and how it works, how have we used it in the past roughly 150 years to understand how our Earth is warming? We'll be talking about that in the next video.